hello to my earth signs Capricorn, Taurus and Virgo. This is the Scorpio Lunar Eclipse. You'll find the timestamps for your rising sign listed below. Hello Capricorn Rising, welcome to your horoscope for the lunar eclipse in Scorpio happening on May the 6th at 3.36 a.m. if you're in the southern hemisphere with me. So this is an early, early a.m. eclipse. I'm not so sure if it's visible. I am, the jury's still out on if you should look at them or not. Uh, what I will tell you is that this is kind of like the third chapter in a three-part series. These eclipses in Scorpio have been with us since the 16th of May of last year. And when we think of Scorpio in a Capricorn rising chart, we think of the 11th house, which is where we find friendship and a sense of uh, community and, and, and humanity the human species itself, how we relate to our good friends, how we form uh, collaboration with other people, and how we build community, how we find a sense of safety and comfort in a social environment. And so when we think of eclipses, especially Dragon's Tail, South Node eclipses, there's always some kind of shedding that happens there. And so I want you to have a little think back to about a year ago, Capricorn, and think about your place in the group. Think about your belonging, your sense of belonging in the group and recognize the shift that's happened there and recognize where you may have come off course or fallen out of friendship with some people and what that clearing has provided for you, what gateway has that provided for you to move into the next environment that provides you with, you know, a sense of belonging. If we kind of zoom out globally and think about, you know, the human condition, we can get a bit tripped out, we can get a bit spaced out and a bit worried and probably have a compulsion to hide away because right now it, it feels like it's kind of difficult to get along. <clears throat> yeah. And maybe there's, you know, a sense of there, there's a station for you or a particular mode that you operated in a group that can't be any longer. I think with the kind of influence of Pluto in Capricorn, um, particularly in these final degrees, Pluto is just stationed direct, uh, retrograde in Aquarius and is about to move gently, slowly back into Capricorn. So there is going to be another reminder of these, these, um, lessons in, in, uh, disintegration. And the eclipses are kind of highlighting that point too. Scorpio is a real intense sign. Scorpio has a depth to plummet, you know. There's an emotional intensity that uh, we have to face in Scorpio. Whenever, there's the, whenever, there's the, whenever the moon is in Scorpio, there is, yeah, there's drama. <laughs> and so an eclipse here is kind of, yeah, an eclipse visualize that image of like someone pulling the socket, pulling out the power and to, to feel out of step in a, in a friendship group or to feel that you can't sort of be the same person anymore or you can't operate the way that you used to in, in, in friendship. If there's no clearing and no sort of like gateway to the next phase, it can feel really lonely. You can kind of feel out of out of touch or out of rhythm with with the group. It's a horrible feeling, and yeah, like it's there's so much um, there's so much speed. There's a rapid pace uh, 
that we're all expected to live by on planet Earth right now. And it's just been gaining momentum. And I don't know if it's because I'm six months away from turning 40. And if that's just a natural thing that you sort of, you know, slow down, I want to get off. But it kind of, we can't discount the, um, the pull of like social media to that, that, that rap rapidity, that rapid pace of life, you know, moments can't exist for the time that they are required any longer without concentration on that, you know, the, the, I just had this image of like a, you know, like a doom scroll. And I'm not sure if it's because I've been resisting doing that lately, but it's sort of like, I actually have been resisting doing that lately. And I tell you what, like it's sort of, I've, I've kind of been able to find a center again after a lot of anxiety and a lot of, a lot of, um, uh, a fear that I can't keep up. So the eclipse here in Scorpio, as I said, it's the third chapter in, in a, in a series. So as I pull these tarot cards, Capricorn, I want you to, you know, sort of cast your mind back to a year ago, the 16th of May in particular. That's when the, the, the first lunar eclipse in Scorpio happened. And I want you to think about your, your environment, your friendship groups, the circles you were rolling with, um, your colleagues, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I want you to think about your, your ability to be optimistic and your, your, your sense of, of grounding in, in the human condition. And I want you to, to make mention, maybe you can even write them down, write down what was forcibly sort of retracted or what had to change, you know, what kind of, what kind of Scorpio uh, face-off maybe happened for you. And where are you now in that environment? Like, do you feel that, that what has been shedding was uh, beneficial? Is there, as Scorpio has a beautiful way of doing, is there a bit of grief that you need to experience and you need to kind of, um, yeah, uh, I had this I had this thought this morning, my, my mind runs a mile a minute at all times, but this morning I woke up with a conversation going on in my head as I always do, but this morning it was the message loud and clear, it was like time is not linear. And I just, I had this, I was trying to, because I think about obviously charts and the two dimensional um, image of the universal stratosphere and I try and, I'm always trying to think of how I can best explain it. And I had this visual image of planet Earth and making its slow track around the sun and also in its orbit to the circular motion. I saw the moon moving around the Earth. I saw all of these moving parts in our universe and the message, the, the voice was time is not linear. It's sick cyclical you know I think I say that Capricorn because sometimes we if we if we think too linear if we think in linear terms we can think that we've failed or that we uh, we can feel so much regret um, at what is gone um, and we can feel really trepidatious about what lies ahead because we're kind of thinking okay well it's sort of there's the beginning, the middle and the end. I'm heading towards the end and I can't see my way clear. I can't, I can't, I don't know what lies ahead. And if I don't achieve this by this time, then is that failure? Have I failed? Have I, have I stuffed it up? Is there no hope for us if we keep going the way that we're going? All I can see is, uh, is all I can, yeah, all I can see is, is horror. I don't think that that's the case, Capricorn. I think that, yeah, if we can find the, uh, find the kind of, find the harmony in, in, in a circle rather than in a straight line, if we can, if we can consider our lives as such too, that everything 
has a season and every season changes and it comes back around again and we set off again and it comes back around again. And this isn't to say that we need to kind of live in the past or, you know, live in regret, you know, or that, uh, you know, language like, you know, vicious cycle is definitely something to keep in mind, you know, if it's a repetitive action of self-flagellation, if you're continually, you know, um, making the same choices or involving yourself with the same kinds of personalities or kind of entering, a, you know, a space of friendship with the same uh, with this, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm a bit scattered. I've learned that you kind of teach people how to treat you if you are continually treating yourself in the same way. If your idea, if your idea of your needs and your um, uh, wants and your active service is the same, sort of like I always do this, I attract these same people. Um, why can no one give me the comfort that I need? It's because I'm not worth it because I'm sort of buried in this way. It, that's when that, that phrase, you teach people how to treat you kind of um, comes into play because your sense of boundary or lack thereof you kind of can't hold it against people if they regard you in a certain way because of the way that you pre present. Ugh. No, it's, this is all quite muddy. I'm looking at these tarot cards though, Cap, and I've got the Six of Swords. So we are talking about boundaries. We are talking about moving away from a space that is highly emotionally charged and turbulent and possibly a little bit Scorpio. You know, I think I, I'm, what I'm feeling here is that there's something about sort of friendship or community or, or you know, a place in the group that um, was really hurtful to you and, and quite damaging. Or if there was consistency in your um, emotional system being overlooked or mistreated, that this eclipse is, you know, the third in a series. It's kind of an encouragement for you to sort of really move away from that mode of operation and I, uh, yeah, not to place blame on yourself, but also not to not to sort of submit to any bad behavior any longer. You know, we teach people how to treat you. They also teach you how to treat them too. And if they're going to continually uh, disregard your sensitivity, your vulnerability, then that's a lesson in in moving moving away from that. The six of swords here is like a boundary. You can see it's a, like the there's a kind of protection that I feel in this card. It's a bit grim. It's not, you know, it's not gorgeous. It's not um, it's not a cheery card, but it's definitely a card of self preservation, and it's kind of protecting the parts of you that need protection, being kind to those parts, being gentle with them, and actively stepping away from an environment that is damaging, that is hurtful. I got the Knight of Swords and the King of Cups, so I think that there's you're in great company to do this. I think that there's probably some truth that will be, if not already revealed, and this eclipse is, you know, time to absorb. It may happen at the eclipse that there may be, you know, a lightning bolt. You're sort of like, oh my gosh, I don't need this anymore. I had it really confused in my mind. I thought that this was the relationship. I thought this was the friendship. And this is not it. This is quite obvious that, that this is not how I perceive this as working. And if this is the reality of this relationship, then I kind of need to step away from it. It doesn't really, it's not really, um, it's kind of damaging. It's hard to do that. It's hard to move away from especially long-standing friendships, especially friendships that have existed for so long. And, you know, to abstract it a bit, maybe not even friendship, but, you know, it's hard to step away from a persona that you've worn, you know, to function in a group. It's hard to step away from that because you kind of feel like, oh, I don't know what, what, what I'm, what's my function now. I don't know. I'm feeling really vulnerable and I'm feeling like I really need some love. 
and some guidance, but I'm not used to that. I'm used to putting up with it or I'm used to receiving this or giving someone the benefit of the doubt, sort of, you know, like existing patiently through their continual bad behaviour because you think, okay, well, I can see it from your perspective. I can see where you're coming from and you're behaving like this because of your past and because of your perspective on life. And I'm, you know, I can zoom out. I can sort of, you know, be a bit more humanitarian about it and sort of see that. But I think sometimes, I don't know, as painful as it is, sometimes you really do need to step out and away from uh, hurtful relationships. There's always an opportunity, as I said before, you know, time isn't linear. You can always come back around. You can enter that space again. But as the different person that you are now, and hopefully with a bit of growth and um, evolution from the other person too, if you're looking for your, like where you belong, Capricorn, I think it's going to be revealed, you know, like it doesn't have to be so specifically as these dates, you know, the 6th of May, but I think that from the 6th of May, the idea that your place in the group, um, your sense of belonging is something that you don't have to feel guilty about asking for and that friendships that you will tend to and you will you will you will harbor and, and and nurture will be for the benefit of the well-being of your friends and also for your own that this mask that you know this sort of guard this armor can sort of drop a bit the king of pentacles is is what I kind of see this as you, but it, you know, it's like there's there's a sense of real grounding and real sort of trust in the the King of Pentacles. This individual really has their two feet on the ground, and they're in they're grounded in reality. And they're not going to get so swept up in, um, you know. They've got room enough to meet you as as where you're at. They've got room enough to open their door and to let you in. That's what you, I imagine, probably would like to consider yourself as doing for other folks, Capricorn. And I think that it's really important that you, you receive that as well. And it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard... It's a hard goodbye... Because no one wants to be lonely, no one wants to be by themselves. You know, we all need encouragement and understanding and love and we all need space enough and room enough to make mistakes. And we all need to feel like... We all need to feel happy to be here. In our in our friendships in our in our community, we all need yeah, we need it. We need to we need to want the best for our friends and to trust that they want the best for us. So at this last Scorpio eclipse, Capricorn, I trust that that's that's on the way for you. That's coming up. That's your reading for this lunation. Yeah, I hope we'll see what happens. Yeah, don't fear it. It's not, yeah, we don't need to. Um, these aren't, you know, it's predictions of, you know, doom. Yeah, I'm not. I, I, there's no fate that you're tied to, Capricorn. You've got control of your own life and your own destiny. But if what I've said about the importance of friendship is ringing true to you then you can take that message and you can apply it to your life and you can hopefully approach your circumstance your environment with a greater clarity and a greater um sense of uh yeah self-preservation and of self-love 
But I'll be back with you in two weeks and we'll chat about the new moon in Taurus. This is a little clearing in a, in a very choppy path. This will be the first new moon that we'll have access to in Taurus for some time. And for you, this is your uh, expressive zone. There's a lot of um, love and potential that happens in the fifth house. A lot of creativity. So I hope that, yeah, we'll be able to think of some strategies of how you can take what you know, take what you've lived through and learned, and then, you know, make some make something beautiful out of it. But um, yeah, head to umaruby.com. I can read your birth chart if I've not before. Um, if you're confused about sun signs and moon signs and rising signs, then I'd highly encourage you to get a birth chart reading because I can explain to you through pictures and images as to what on earth I'm talking about. There's, we are multifaceted beings. We aren't just our sun sign. The sun sign's a great gateway into kind of a sense of self-understanding and it's a very important part of ourselves. But there's so many different configurations that make up the individual. As I said, multifaceted. Hmm. Um, I'll speak to you in two weeks, Capricorn. Bye. Hello, Taurus Rising. This is your horoscope for the final Scorpio lunar eclipse happening on May the 6th, 2023 at 3.36 a.m. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me and golly, we've got lots to talk about and we're going to be gentle with it uh, and we're going to be delving into the land of your seventh house, which is where we come into relationship, where we commune with our nearest and dearest, our beloveds, where we find love, where we make commitment to one another. And we're going to be talking about the uh, short circuiting that's been occurring in that house for you over, I think probably definitely the last 12 months. Um, the first lunar eclipse that we had in Scorpio was on May the 16th of last year. So if that date means anything to you, this is probably a marker point as to some of the short circuiting that maybe started to happen in the way that you were relating to people that you care and love about. There may have been some shedding that occurred there in that space for you as, as you are coming to terms with all of the eclipses happening a little deeper in your own sense of self. This axis of the dragon's head and tail in Taurus and Scorpio has been with us since November of 2021. There's actually, if you've not read it, I, um, I put out a newsletter once a month as the seasons change. And the last newsletter I have written, it's under the glory box tab of my, my website. It's called Waking the Witch. And I was listening to uh, one of my favourite albums um, by Kate Bush a couple of weeks ago. And I just started crying. I burst into tears. It was huge. Um, the last seven songs on that album, in the original pressing of it, in the record, they were on the side two. And they were subtitled The um, Ninth Wave Suite. And they tell a narrative, it's the, seven, the last seven songs on Hounds of Love that tell the story of a woman lost at sea, shipwreck or something's happened, but she's in a huge body of water and she's floating on the surface and she's sort of battling to stay alive. There's something about sort of the threat of, you know, sinking, plunging to the bottom, um, of not surviving the night. And so the seven songs are sort of broken up into these states of um, mentality, these different visions and voices and also spirit guides perhaps that gather around her to keep her going, to keep her alive. And I've known this album for decades now, you know, but I think that I really needed to hear this music at the, yeah, went with two weeks ago, I think it was, in its clarity. And I was reminded because I was trying to think, I was trying to think of how I would write about um, eclipse season and, and what we've sort of gone through over the last 18 months because it's been quite large and, you know, obviously for different people in different areas. But I had my Taurus friends and my Scorpio friends in my heart and I thought about the idea of eclipses in the first and the seventh house and I thought about also 
the significations of Scorpio, which are all about, you know, depth. Scorpio is a water sign that carries with it a great responsibility um, not to sink to the bottom. That's why, that's why Scorpio sort of will maybe freeze out others because they've been hurt by them. And they'll never forget a thing, you know. They are so absorbent and they do hold on to uh, Im intense emotional experiences. And for my Taurus friends, Scorpio rules the, the, the seventh house of relationships. So it's almost as if, yeah, this story of like treading water and trying not to sink, you know, it's a great analogy for depression too. And in my experience with depression, it was a great floodgate to let it out, to recognize that someone as brilliant as Kate Bush had written this music before I was born, I think, a couple of years before I was born. But for this to be such a guiding light for myself and for everyone. Yeah, if you wanted to read about it, you can head over to the glory box section of my website and have a look. I'm going to pull you some tarot cards, I think, Taurus, because there's no use in sort of, you know, predicting the worst. It's not what these readings are for. These readings are sort of to, to guide you through and to help you out to sort of, if we can, find a pattern that's occurring in your life that's also occurring in the stars. And if we can do that, then in times of tension or of conflict, we feel less alone and it's not that we sort of like want to take the medicine or take the, you know, take what's coming to us, but we can give ourselves a bit of um, a reprieve from maybe feeling so responsible or feeling if there's a limit to our capacity to deal with the confrontation of maybe what's been going on in the seventh house. And these readings, these horoscopes, the tarot and the astrology is here simply to provide you with some company as we go through it. It's what rock and roll is for too. I think that, yeah. Yeah. Song, song lyrics are a form of scrying, aren't they? You can... And it depends on who you listen to <clears throat> and why you listen to them. And it's something that, yeah, it's something that I've always done since I was very, very young. And it's something that I kind of can't, um, I can't plan. But it seems that if I'm in a place of tension or if I'm in a, a, a state of conflict mm -hmm. with myself or with my circumstance, if I'm finding it really difficult or if I'm finding it difficult to find the words for life or to find the pathway to move through and I'm listening to music as I often do all the time, lyrics will come and they'll hook in and they'll tell me what I need to hear. And they'll allow me a bit of emotional freedom to release and to, to let it out. The seventh house is beautiful. The seventh house in opposition to the first is a beautiful figure eight of give and receive, you know. It's our soul and the other. How we show up, what our needs are, and how we listen and tend to and provide for the needs of, of our nearest and dearest, our beloveds. It's hard to deal with eclipses in that space. We miss someone, we miss them. Sometimes we can't call them to tell them so. It hurts. And sometimes there's a song lyric for that feeling. 
the tarot I got is really beautiful. I got the page of cups, the two of cups and the six of pentacles. I got a beautiful story of reciprocation and I got a, like there's a potential here. There's a message of love here that's really gentle and really pure, really simple. And it's a message between beloveds. It's a message between one and the other. It's a recognition of the time spent together and the healing properties of falling in love, the healing properties of coming face to face with somebody that you care and admire and love so much. It's a simple, gentle message of affection and kindness. And I think in times when we're feeling really vulnerable and in need that message is like solid gold and as i said it can be found in all sorts of different places it can be found in yeah and you can't yeah you can't i said i tend to go to pieces when i'm not expecting it you know i often have i'll have music playing all day um and yeah, sometimes if I know that I need a bit of a release, I'll put something on specific because I know that there's the hooks in there. There's the, the story that has the key to let it op open for me. But oftentimes the most cleansing of that, that feeling of release occurs when you're not expecting it. You know, you can listen to the same song a thousand times and the lyrics hit you in the sweet spot when they need to. There's a, there's a really gentle message here for you at this time, Taurus. And it's got it's um it's about a really sacred relationship. It's about a a coupling that felt really beautiful for you. It's about one coming together with the other. A reciprocal act of healing that can occur through the emotion of love. And the message is, thank you. <laughs> the message is, you meant the world to me. The message is, I adore you. You're wonderful. What we shared together, I have held in my heart and I'll hold it for the rest of my life. And you meant the world to me. I adore you. There's a gold frap song that I cry to a lot as well. <laughs> and... Um, it's called Some People. It's off the, um, oh, words are escaping me now. How's it go? Some people don't care much. Some people feel they're in touch with spirit worlds. I'm talking to you now. You know that song? Check it out. It's called Some People. Remember the first time? That I heard that song again, I was feeling really alone. And Alison Goldfrapp said to me, some people feel they're in touch with spirit worlds. I'm talking to you now. I'd never heard it that way before, but that's the lyric. Floods of tears. Kind of feels like an initiation for you, Taurus. It's past 18 months. You've really come into a reckoning with who you are, who you want to become, what lies beyond your, your ego. It's not a dirty word, but what lies beyond your um, 
reality, your, 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 your mind, something much deeper. And that's sort of getting stronger. There's been such an emphasis here. And, you know, Uranus has been there too in, in Taurus for all of this time. So there's like a, a flipping of the script. There's a revolution, an internal revolution that you've been dealing with, you know, as you've been doing the shopping, as you've been paying the bills, all of that stuff. There's this burning feeling inside. It's growing hotter and hotter. And the turbulence of that seventh house, the, the uh, release of that seventh house has been charging away too. And so at this final eclipse in Scorpio, the message is, I love you. You're loved, Taurus. You're adored. And you're protected. So I'm going to be speaking to you in two weeks and we're going to have a new moon in Taurus. The way that the die is cast, we get a clearing. The dragon's head's further enough away from the moon. So there'll be no eclipse. There'll be a new moon in your first house. A chance for us to take charge and to make some magic. So I'll speak to you then. Rest easy. I hope there was some nice messages in this reading for you, Taurus. And I'll speak to you soon. Head to umaruby.com and I'll read your birth chart whenever you like. You take care. Bye. Hello, Virgo rising. This is your horoscope for the Scorpio lunar eclipse on May the 6th at 3.36 a.m. if you're in the southern hemisphere with me. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, change your clock back. I think it'll be happening sometime on the 5th of May. This is part of a long story and there's probably a lot of um, reflection that we can do at this time. I think I'm going to go probably a bit heavier into the tarot than the astrology this time because we're mid-eclipse and uh, yeah, the rule book is kind of thrown out the window at this time. But I want you to think back to, I think, May the 16th of last year. This was the first Scorpio lunar eclipse that we, that we had in this series. Consider this like a third chapter. And so when, whenever you as a Virgo rising here, Scorpio, you can think about your third house, which is our village. It's our local environment, our neighborhood. It's our uh, kind of, it's like our uh, language, how we develop language and how we share that, how we, how we, ex um, exchange information does that make sense i hope so it's kind of quite it's quite quite um it's sort of on the bottom of the chart so it's quite private you know it's kind of humble in a way it's sort of like you sort of wake up in the morning and you open the curtains and you look around at your street your neighborhood this is your third house and so what kind of changes have been occurring there over the past 12 months. The third house can speak to our siblings too, our brothers and sisters, folks that are kind of um, in our intimate environment. And so on May the 16th of last year, there was the first of these eclipses. On October 25th of last year, there was the second. And now we have the third. When there's an eclipse, there's a, someone pulls the plug there's something that's kind of maybe a bit of a shock to the system. There might be something that sort of shed or fell away that was unusual, that was something that you sort of, you kind of had to make a note of. It could have been a bit confronting as well. There would have been something that you've had to kind of like maybe reconcile over the past 12 months in relationship to your, to your neighbourhood your village, your family. And with the information that has presented itself with, with that uh, discombobulation 
of what you was what you were hoping for a bit of a smooth you know smooth sailing um we're kind of it's like it's like a crescendo is what i really feel and i think rather than sort of maybe try and let's ask tarot straight up but the good news is that this is kind of like the last cab off the rank you know there'll be a reverberation and there'll be consequences and there'll be uh, a culmination that sort of simmers and and settles in your life from this eclipse and probably yeah for the next 12 months or so you know but this part of your life has been the one that's been changing chopping and changing there's been something about kind of um you know, an academic reach or an, an, a want and a will to travel and to expand the mind that's been a bit short-circuited too. Yeah, right. I got the Six of Pentacles, the Five of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands. And so the message is quite clear, Virgo. There's, yeah, the message is really clear. It feels to me like there's been a sense of being taken advantage of and there's been kind of a tax in this environment for you. Um, there's been a continual sort of giving or a continual... Uh, feels lopsided to me it feels like that there's not a reciprocation in this environment or these relationships for you and you've at time and time again have sort of made note made note made note of what's been going on and you've kind of held it to yourself I think for a time because you've been worried about being cast out you've been worried about well I don't really know anyone here like I kind of rely on you know, as as we all do in some way, we kind of rely on our neighbourhood or our, our village. Um, we need that. We don't want to feel so ostracised. You know, I mean, Virgo is the hermit card, you know, so there is sort of something about sort of stealing away that's kind of natural for you, Virgo. But this has been sort of, yeah, this discrepancy with, yeah, family, siblings, neighborhood if feel you feel like you've been giving and you've been giving and you've been giving and you've not been receiving and you've not been receiving and you've not been receiving and you've been holding on to that through these eclipses because you're kind of worried that you know you, that fear of ostracization is really what's coming through quite strongly for me Virgo you're worried that if I say something or if I stand up for myself, or if I tell these people what I really think, or perhaps maybe even you have, and there's been a threat of being cut off. There's been a, th a threat of expulsion, you know. Um, I'm not, I hope that you're not having trouble with your landlords or anything like that. Um, I tell you what, if you are, then we can look to this eclipse as the kind of final crescendo and that whatever information kind of reveals itself, or whatever changes need to be made, then they're going to be made uh, for the better. You know, the eclipses do tend to sort of pull the rug out from under us. It's to course correct. And so if these are sort of, yeah, family relationships, that the rug feels like it's been pulled out from under you, it's to course correct. It's to course correct. And it's also an opportunity for you to sort of think to your, you know, to ask yourself. It's sort of like, okay, well, what has my behavior been? What have I um, put up with? And what won't I put up with any longer? Like what what do I expect? What kind of, you know, honest relationship uh, do I expect from these sort of more intimate relationships? The third house is next to the fourth. So fourth is our sort of ancestry and our legacy, our home and our privacy, you know. And so the third kind of speaks to that. The third is how we kind of, um, yeah, it's how we learn to speak, you know, how we learn our language. And sometimes if we sort of have pain points there, 
um, or if we feel that we kind of can't speak as well, that might be another thing that this eclipse is sort of urging you to move from. It's hard, especially with family, to tell them what you really think or to stand up for yourself if you've spent a lifetime not standing up for yourself. And I think that probably in some relationships in the family, you kind of feel the defense, you know, you've had to sort of like prepare yourself that any kind of conversation or any kind of, you don't want to upset the apple cart because you've from history has proven that there's, it becomes a sparring match. And so maybe in some way you've sort of put up like a barrier to protect yourself that kind of, it, yeah, it feels like a conversation that has to happen and it feels like something that needs to, yeah, that the eclipse will be encouraging from the both of you. If it's to do with a shitty neighbour, you know, I think that this seven of uh, wands here is a nice magical boundary, you know. The seven of wands I find is to be, I find to be quite, um, yeah, it, it, it's quite, uh, protective in a good way you know you, you're, you're having to defend your honor as it were or defend yourself but the ones are magic remember the ones are fire and you might almost need to be sort of protecting yourself from somebody else's sort of heat or intensity you know but yeah these eclipses as i said this isn't this isn't new this is something that's been building for a while at least for the last 12 months. And so, yeah, May 6th, there might be, yeah, the third act, the third chapter to this ongoing story. And this can probably maybe feel a bit destabilizing too. It might be a bit awkward. Um, when I think about the third house, I, always, I do think about folk magic as well. I do think about sort of spiritual ritual um, in... Hellenistic astrology, which is one of the more ancient versions of it, the third house was called the house of the goddess. So, you know, it is the house of the sort of the rhythm, the ritual, the private ritual of life. So maybe there's been some disturbance there. Maybe you're creating something or your, your intent is on, yeah, create, feathering the nest, creating a safe, comfortable, warm home environment where you feel welcome in your neighbourhood and this eclipse is really going to be shedding some light on uh, what is needing to go, what is maybe a bit toxic, to sort of expunge some of those um, unhealthy habits or relationships. It's, it's, yeah. If we look at this, if we look at this Seven of Wands again, Virgo, it's sort of, you can see there's a lot of, there's a lot, it kind of feels there's a lot that you're up against. You know, six wands here. And then the individual here, which is, I would say, you, is protecting, you know. You're having to defend yourself or stand, yeah, stand up for what you believe in. Stand up for yourself. And that's kind of maybe a bit difficult if it's been a while since you've stood up for yourself. You might find that some of these busybodies or... Yeah, it kind of feels, yeah, it feels like this eclipse in the third house. You know, I, I trust that you won't have to move. <laughs> I hope that you, that you won't. If you do have to move, then you can sort of look to this eclipse and be like, okay, well, you know, I'm being guided somewhere safer for me. I'm being guided into the right environment. Shit, I don't want to. I've just freaking set myself up here. But if I've got to go, i got to go. That's all right. I need to get it. Bottom line, we're moving away from this, um, this uh, unfairness. These dynamics that have existed for a long time. You know, and Scorpio, you know, it's, it's deep stuff, deeply rooted stuff. Scorpio is not really afraid to like dredge things up from the bottom though, you know, to sort of expose them. So there is like an extra sort of emotional intensity to these eclipses that you might sort of have a wave of, you know, a wave of feeling or a wave of fear or anger 
or sadness that comes up at these eclipses. But it's in, yeah, in the long run, it's going to be okay. But I, I, I reckon that there's, there's stuff that's going to reveal itself that's been a long time coming. And you'll probably feel a clearing after that weight's been lifted, you know. Um, yeah, I can't tell you, like, the, the feeling of, like, oh, relief when things are finally brought out into the open, you know, when things are finally said. It depends on who you're dealing with because sometimes, you know, that can also be a bit of a red herring. But it's not so much about sort of changing somebody else's behaviour and finally having them see, you know, the... That, I mean, that'd be great, wouldn't it? You know, if you finally speak some sense into somebody or finally speak some 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 truth to the issue. It's sort of less to do with about altering their behavior and more to do with about you being heard. You know, all of this stuff that maybe has been kept to yourself for some time is going to be released and revealed. Your, envi- your home environment, your third house, your village is very important to feel secure in. You know, and you must remember that you're welcome in that environment. You're welcome at home. You know, that's very important to make sure of. To be in, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, to feel unsafe in the streets in which you live. You know, that's, that's a lot of anxiety to carry you know my shoulders are a bit tight at the moment thinking about it yeah so yeah keep your eyes peeled at this eclipse virgo and and keep yeah have keep your eye on on the village and your place in it keep an eye on your goddess rituals maybe probably lock into them a bit Firm, you know, a bit more firmly to see your way clear of whatever turbulence happens at this eclipse. It's the final one in a series of three. So there will be there will be progress after this happens, but everything that's needed to be unearthed is being unearthed for a purpose, you know. It has to, it can't go on the way that it was. So that's your reading, Virgo. Um, take care of yourself. I'll be with you in two weeks and we're going to have a chat about Taurus. Um, We're going to have a new moon in Taurus, which we haven't had for the last 18 months. It's always been an eclipse. So in that way, we do have a bit of access to it. There's a bit of an opportunity to to make some magic. And Taurus for you is your ninth house of travel, you know, and mind expansion, of journeying, of uh, philosophy. So there's maybe a nice portal there for you. Maybe if there's if there's things have been feeling a bit limited or if there's been plans that have been made but have been short-circuited, you know, as far as that, you know, longing to journey forth, then next fortnight we've got a little peephole to make it happen. There's going to be another eclipse in Taurus six months from now, so that's the final hurrah. But this new moon, the dragon's head's too far away, so it's in the clear. But I'll I'll speak to you in two weeks and I'll chat about that. Um, head to umaruby.com and book yourself a birth chart reading. I'd love to talk you through the difference between your sun, moon, rising sign. It can get a bit confusing, some of this language. I do read um, or I do give these horoscopes on the basis of your rising sign. It makes more sense of the house system. So um, if you're confused, send me an email or book yourself in a session and I'd love to explain it to you. Um, I'll speak to you in two weeks. Take care. Bye.